Well guys, I promised you that next time you saw this system, it would be complete. And uh, obviously, I kept my word. We're gonna go ahead and talk about this system. We're gonna talk about some of the parts and stuff. I'm gonna answer some of the questions and comments that I saw in the previous video where I was showing me putting some of this together. EVGA Silent Series power supplies offer excellent silence and efficiency through their new EVGA Eco Mode technology and also features a seven year warranty for worry free gaming. Click the link in the description to learn more. Now the case on here is a Case Labs SM8. I have said it before and a lot of people keep asking me, what case is that? Again, it's the Case Labs SM8. Basically it's the smaller brother to the Case Labs SMA8, even though I think this one came out first, technically, uh, where it doesn't have the lower basement or any of that. It's much smaller, but as you can see, even with a full water cooling loop in here, water cooled graphics card, massive radiator, massive pump, well, D5 pump, not really massive pump, but it's still hard to get this thing looking full. Now what I'd like to do right now is go ahead and just kind of run through the list of parts and then we'll kind of do a two part video here. Uh, well, two purposes to this video, not a two part. We're not doing a part B and part C or any of that, I promise. Even though technically this is already part two. But I wanted to talk about why the parts that are in here are in here because a lot of people in the previous video seem to draw their own conclusions as to why these parts are in there and unfortunately you guys are pretty much flat out wrong. And secondly, uh, I want to talk about rigid tubing and whether or not it's something you should consider for your first time build because that seems to be the most common question I get regarding rigid tubing is do I recommend that a first time water cooling uh, builder try it? So before we start talking about the parts, let's go ahead and roll that epic loop filling video. You guys love seeing the loops get filled. And I do admit it is kind of nice to watch. It's, it is kind of sexy. So anyway, let's go ahead and roll that footage and then we'll start talking about the system. I still believe that the best bang for the buck AMD CPU that you can buy right now is still the 8350. So it's got eight threads of performance and that's more than enough for just about any game these days. So it is an 8350 being cooled by an EK Supremacy Evo block with the proper insert in there and proper cooling plate for the AMD CPU. We have an EVGA GTX 980 super clocked in here with the EK nickel and acetal full cover block with the full cover backplate on there. Fury 650, more than enough wattage for this system, especially since, uh, since this is going to a customer and it's not mine. I only overclocked the CPU to 4.4 so I can keep the voltage low. And I'm gonna leave the graphics card stock. She plays mostly like World of Warcraft and a lot of games that aren't super intensive. So I don't wanna introduce more heat and more maintenance or just the idea of possible crashing. So we're just letting the GPU do its own thing with the stock BIOS. It's not a hacked BIOS or anything like that. The motherboard is an ASRock Fatality uh, 970 performance motherboard. It's not the greatest overclocking motherboard that probably still belongs to the ASUS Crosshair 5 formula. Uh, but I think the bang for the buck, the features that you get on this motherboard for being a 970 are definitely there. You've got plenty of fan headers, you've got full fan control, overclocking control, memory uh, timings, memory speed, everything you would want on a basic motherboard uh, is there, easy to use, but with more advanced feature sets. And you really don't need to go with a 990FX chipset. It's not gonna do anything for your performance unless you are running more than two-way uh, crossfire or whatever they call it. I mean, two-way would be SLI. It is an SLI and a crossfire board, but unless you're going more than two graphics cards, three or four, you don't need the 990FX. 
The memory in this thing is 16 gigabytes of ADATA XPG V1. Uh, went with that because it's nice and red. It matches the system nicely. Slightly different shade of red, but nothing terrible. For main drive, 256 gigabyte SSD uh, M6S from Plextor. And then it's got a two terabyte Toshiba 7200 64 meg cache uh, main drive. Well, I guess you'd call it junk drive, game drive, storage drive, mass storage. Now let's talk about the cooling because this is the part where most people were like, why in the heck are you spending money on water cooling in this thing when you could spend the money on getting better performance parts, like say, faster memory, or a better motherboard, or another graphics card, or something along those lines. Well, we'll just start with the, the list of parts first. EK water blocks, 45 millimeter by 480 millimeter radiator. Uh, we've got four of the brand new Fractal Venturi static pressure fans on here. We've got three of the Venturi uh, airflow fans on the front, Alpha Cool top on a D5, Bits Power 250 millimeter reservoir, Primo Chill revolver fittings for all the rigid uh, fittings, and then of course we've got the uh, Primo Chill PETG tubing on this thing. And I gotta tell you right now, this thing runs super cool. In fact, this CPU under load is only hitting 47 degrees Celsius. The graphics card is hitting 45 degrees Celsius. There is definitely more cooling in this thing than is really necessary, but that was kind of the idea, especially since we live in a hot climate. Oh, look, the system just turned red. It must know we're talking about AMD right now. Which my white balance just went to hell. Here's the bottom line on the parts. This video was never meant, in fact, this series about this case and this system was never meant to be a guide. It didn't say guide anywhere in the description. It didn't say guide anywhere in the title. It didn't say guide anywhere in my dialogue. This is a log. This is a computer that was built and it is being logged via video. The parts that are in here do not necessarily match up in being the most efficient cost-wise. So what does that mean? It means she had a set budget to spend and I had a set amount of money to work with. Things that I thought would look nice in here, do good for a video, do good for talking points, I donated to the build. I donated most of the water cooling stuff. I got the case provided by Case Labs absolutely free to her. So a lot of this stuff here were things that I upgraded for her just for the sake of doing a build log on the video. It's to the point to where I wanted to do something nice that looked really, really nice. She's the friend of the owner of Red Mist. They wanted something that kind of matched. And this is what we came up with. Now that my Rant 30 is out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about rigid tubing for a moment here. That is easily one of the most common things I'm asked is how I feel about rigid tubing and should a first time water cooler try it? Uh, you know, quite honestly, I think you should because it doesn't take any real special tools all the bends you see in here were done by hand. I didn't use a bending device. I didn't use a bending aid. I didn't even measure it. It's one of those things if you take your time and you really just think about what you want to do before you do it, anybody can do this. I use an $18 heat gun from Lowe's. Nothing special. And other than that, other than a hacksaw, in fact, I don't even use a hacksaw anymore. I use a $7 pipe cutter from Lowe's as well because you can do it with the PETG. You can't do it with the acrylic. It's easy. The fittings are cheaper overall than getting all the revolvers and all the compression fittings that are needed for soft tubing. The tubing isn't going to fade or leach plasticizer, which is gonna make your, clout, your tubing look all clouded or get gunked up in your tiny micro channels inside your blocks. And if you mess up, the tubing is cheap. To get 10 feet of soft tubing is usually in excess of 30 bucks, but you can get 10 feet of PETG for like 12 bucks. So buy a lot more than you need and practice. It's not hard. I think everybody should try it. I really do. Because if you mess up, you can just try again. But soft tubing, if you cut that thing and you messed up and you were too short, well, unless that piece can be used somewhere else in the build, uh, you just wasted that piece. And speaking as somebody from experience who in the past has messed up with soft tubing and had to go buy more, soft tubing is not cheap. I just think that PETG uh, or even acrylic still, there's, a, there's plenty of uses for acrylic out there. Some coolants are actually not compatible with PETG because of different uh, chemical base and the plastic that's in the PETG. It could cause melting. Maybe I should do a video about that in the future. Uh, but just know that there are uses for both still. And I, I just think a lot of the benefits of acrylic tubing, or I'll just say rigid tubing, outweigh that of soft tubing. The nice thing is you can also fill in a lot of this dead space with neat little bends. Like, I mean, some of these bends here 
are like this simply to fill in some of the space because of the fact that uh, you just aren't, with, with soft tubing, it's gonna go the way it wants to go. And especially since it was coiled up, it's gonna wanna go the way it wants to go. No matter what you do, it's always gonna have a curve to it. Well guys, there you go. She's done. Customer's gonna pick it up uh, Sunday or Monday, I think. I'm gonna be sad to see her go. I, I love working on these systems. I spend a lot of time on them. I feel like a piece of me goes into them. So every time I build one and off it goes, I kind of feel like, um, you know, I'm a little sad. Like, I, oh, that one's, that one's mine. It's my computer. And I've got enough computers around here. So anyway, it's time to get out of here. You know, I'm thinking we're lacking water cooling content. So I need you guys to tell me what you want me to cover when it comes to water cooling. I've, I've got all this stuff in my head and some of it actually matters. It's hard for me to just pick out like, okay, we're gonna do this topic, we're gonna do this topic, we're gonna do this topic. It's easier for me to kind of get the collective information from the crowd saying, all right, there's you know 200 people asking me to cover this. So I need you guys to tell me, when it comes to water cooling stuff, what do you want to see? What kind of informational videos, tutorials, or how-tos do you want to see? And we'll get that done. I, I do feel like we're lacking some water cooling stuff on here, and we're gonna change that soon. I've got the land rig I'm building, which is gonna be water cooled, again, with rigid tubing. I've got some radiator reviews coming up, a few of them, actually. And we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna do this. We're gonna get back to our water cooling roots here on this channel, especially since so many people are starting to pick up water cooling like Kyle and Paul's Hardware and these guys are really starting to get their feet wet. No pun intended, or maybe just slightly. I figure we'll just go ahead and get her done. That's it, we're gonna get on out of here. I think the customer's build turned out really, really good. I think it looks amazing. I even you know, lit up the, the reservoir back there. I, I just put an LED strip behind it. It's actually behind the reservoir. It's not in the reservoir. See, see my finger right there? Uh, maybe not. But anyway, this is not one of those lit up reservoirs. Uh, I just stuck an LED strip back there. All right, time to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.